that you know we know the elders are held uh, to a higher standard and Morris is no exception okay so this is very unfortunate you can stand by your pastor and everything but the stuff that's coming out right now be like okay there's just uh, there's just too much that is going on and these people have decided to keep uh, quiet the elders are responding so these are not just stuff that's uh, that's been made up at all right Right, right, right. So, you know, in, in speaking of Robert Morris and talking about him and this talk uh, topic of restoration, this is actually a good segue because we're going to show a clip where he's talking about the restoration of Mark Driscoll because he was, uh, I believe, instrumental in that process, mm -hmm. right? So let's, let's hear what Robert Morris thinks about people being restored and in this case about Mark Driscoll um real quick we'll bring that in for y'all right now narrative that takes place around what happens i want to introduce you to a friend a good friend of mine and i've been um speaking with him for several months now he's going through a a, a difficulty that most of you've probably read about um i know the behind the scenes story uh, he was supposed to speak at our conference uh, it was publicized that we canceled him. It's not true. We did not cancel. I'm speaking of Mark Driscoll. We did not cancel him. He and I decided together uh, that he was going to step out of ministry for a season and get some healing. Uh, he asked me, could I come to the conference and just attend? And I thought that was very big of him to just come and be ministered to. And again, I want to say a couple of things. First of all, I want you to know that everything you read on the internet is not true. And there are some pastors, myself included, and some others that you would know that we're speaking into his life, and he's listening. And uh, uh, most of what you read is not true. Some of it is. He did make some mistakes. Now, here's what I figure. We've got two choices. One is we could crucify him. But since someone's already been crucified for him... The other choice is we could restore him with a spirit of gentleness, considering ourselves, lest we are also tempted. And it's very sad that in the church, we're the only army that shoots at our wounded. And I want you to stop it. I really do. Thank you. I'd like for you to show your love for him. I'd like for you to just welcome him. Mark, would you stand up? This is Mark Driscoll. And so before we started the church too, my pastor. Wow. <laughs> Just like that, Mark Driscoll, the king of the Jezebel spirit, was restored back to ministry. <laughs> oh, man. So far, Mark Driscoll hasn't, has not said anything about uh, Robert Morris. Knowing Mark Driscoll, I don't think he'll be saying anything. <laughs> he'll just be like, uh, you know, I'm just going to keep it moving, okay? This guy was there for me. Now I'm just going to keep quiet. So Mark Driscoll for you guys. <laughs> oh, man. It's... um. You can see how these people, guys like him with these same tendencies, handle these issues. And how he spoke about Mark Driscoll saying that he mentioned something horrible in there where he says we're in the church is the only place where we, we fire at or, or shoot at our wounded. Mm -hmm. Right? And, he, and he's like making it look like Driscoll was, was some huge victim in this whole thing. <laughs> and people are like bullying him and mistreating him, talking down about him. And he needs to be, uh, you know, handled gently and all of these things as though there was this massive cruelty that this great cruelty that happened to Mark Driscoll mm. when that is not the case. That is mm -hmm. not the case. As a matter of fact, 
he had done a lot of things that were worthy of disqualification, worthy of disqualification. Mm. And you could see that Morris didn't even have that category in his mind that this man that I'm trying to talk about is actually worthy mm -hmm. of disqualification. He didn't mm -hmm. have that in his mind. Mm -hmm. In his mind, he was thinking automatically uh, restoration. Yeah. Restoration. Yeah. So exactly. Because same situation, right? When Mark Driscoll left Mars Hill, he went, you know, quite a little bit for quite some years. And then the next minute, this guy shows up with his own church, Trinity Bible Church, uh, Bible church in Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay. From Washington, Seattle, like, okay, I'm just going to go someplace else, right? And start from the ground up. And now yeah, here he is, right? And promoting this so-called Jezebel spirit, denounce everything else that he used to believe so he can create a new cultish kingdom that he's building out there in Scottsdale, Arizona. So, yeah, as they say <laughs> The beds of the same feathers, like <laughs> flogging together. So this is what we see. This is what we see. And knowing the Mark Drisk of Mars here, like what are you doing with Robert Morris? Like that doesn't make any sense. So the fact that you are <laughs> Robert Morris is the one who is restoring you. Like oh, by the way, Robert Morris also does believe this the Jezebel spirit thing. Okay, so they they right. know each other pretty well. Yeah, I mean, he actually accused Cindy of having the yeah, Jezebel that's spirit, Jezebel which was spirit. <laughs> so stupid, so stupid, oh, so man. stupid. Yeah. Yep, and you see, just talking about mistakes. They, yeah, they, they don't want to call it sin. Right. They just use the word mistake. So, yeah, it's sunny side. Good point, Shara. Yeah. They just downplay all of this stuff, mm -hmm. try to make it sound like it's not a huge deal. Um, it's It's just terrible, man. Yeah, they sure like to twist scripture to make to meet their agenda. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um craziness. Craziness. Uh, oh, Tim Moy says it was a Jezebel spirit. Give Mark a break. <laughs> man, listen. This uh, Yeah. He, this this whole Jezebel thing, nonsense. Oh yeah. Susie Q. Right on, Susie Q. Absolutely. Right Narcissists on. are always the victim. This is huge. What Susie just said. That is huge. Mm -hmm. They are they are indeed always the victim. You know, they turn things around, make people feel like you gotta feel sorry for them. That is how they, they want this to be, you know, these things to be taken uh to be handled. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, very, very crazy. So, yeah, man, there's a staff, my, uh, Robert Morris. Yeah. He's being canceled. He's getting it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's happening, man. And, I mean, there's, there's just a lot to it. Uh, shout out to my brother, Dwayne Thomas. Dwayne, always supporting, always giving good encouragement. Thank you, brother. They, these are some dangerous people calling themselves spiritual leaders. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very, very, very dangerous. Very dangerous people who ought not to have anybody under their care and nope. need to go somewhere and actually be, these are people who, who themselves just actually just need to be discipled. Yes. They don't even need, not, don't, not even like leadership. You need to sit down and be discipled yes. and actually learn how to be a, uh, you know, what the Bible says is the character of a Christian. Yeah. In front of the pew, not behind the pew. Right. In front of the pulpit, not behind the pulpit. Right. As they say. Absolutely. This is the statement that was issued by uh, Tom Lynn, mm -hmm. who is also a, one of the senior pastors at Gateway Church. Okay. okay? And it says, I'm deeply saddened by the pain Cindy Clemensha has endured and the recent revelations regarding Pastor Robert Morris. My deepest sympathies go out to Cindy and I pray her suffering is fully recognized and validated. To be quite honest at this point, the way these people are sending in uh, that they are sorry and everything, because I think at this point, this lady needs some, some restitution that they will give it to her, honestly. Okay, so... They, they will take these statements, but hey, man, bring something, right? It's never too late to make something right. Until seeing the statement on June 14, I did not fully understand the severity and specificity of the uh, nature abuse she experienced, nor did I know she was 12 years old when the abuse began. I believe Robert's testimony, which included an admonition of infidelity with the quote-unquote young lady like many others. I was under the impression that the, uh, the matters of infidelity widely accepted 
accepted as truth had been fully addressed by the elders at Shady Grove Church. As it was always described to me, the agreed upon process between Pastor Robert and the elders of Shady Grove Church, along with Cindy's parents, included a two year restoration period during which he stepped out of ministry and received professional counseling. My understanding was the process had been closely managed by the elders of Shady Grove Church and it was complete. When Cindy came forward in 2005, I believed based on the knowledge I had at the time that the necessary action had been taken and the situation had been appropriately resolved as it concerned a pastor involved in a moral failure. Regrettably, I have never met Cindy in person and until this past Friday, I never fully grasped the extent of the abuse she endured or the fact that Cindy was a child, not quote-unquote young lady at the time. It was always understood that Pastor Robert had a consexual extramarital affair, not the abuse of a 12-year-old child. It is heartbreaking to know Cindy has suffered this uh, prolonged pain, I pray she finds the healing she has longed for. Given the facts that have now emerged, it is evident that more could have been done to support and protect Cindy. And for that, I'm deeply sorry. The process of healing varies for each person who has been abused. And this is Cindy's time to come forward. I will be praying for Cindy and her family so she can continue to heal and to be supported in her journey to recovery. Tom Lane. So Tom Lane uh, issued this statement. He did post this statement on his uh, Instagram page because the understanding was like the elders were aware of what happened, which is true. The elders were aware, but Robert Morris had left out the significant detail that the situation uh, involved a 12 year old child. It wasn't uh, an adult when all these things transpired. So at this point, I guess these elders are putting out their statement just to make sure, just so you guys know, we didn't know, uh, we didn't know that it was a 12 year old. So this is where the situation is at. And then uh, Desta also, which does have, I guess, um, Robert Morris. Uh, they do have Robert Morris, right? On, on Desta. They, they, they did. They did? Yeah, okay. They did. So they have also uh, issued a statement. I guess they are also cutting ties with uh, Robert Morris. Okay. They put out uh, the statement as well. The statement, uh, I think it's below right there. So this is a statement from DESTA, the DESTA Television Network. We are deeply grieved and saddened by the recent and very serious allegations against Pastor Robert Morris involving the abuse of a 12-year-old minor. In light of these events and recently released statement by Gateway's elders, DESTA leadership has made the decision to remove all of Pastor Robert Morris' programming from our broadcasting schedule. Desta unequivocally condemns the actions described in these allegations and remains committed to upholding biblical values as outlined in the Word of God. As we navigate through this challenging situation, we extend our heartfelt support and prayers to all those impacted. So Desta has obviously removed um, Robert Morris. To me, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm glad you remove Robert Morris because Robert Morris uh, is a false teacher, which is good. We don't want them to be promoting his false teaching out there. But I don't know. Do you guys think it's it's appropriate to remove someone uh, somebody else's material? Like, it's their in, network. It's their network. Okay. They I start they owns the network. Yeah, they, you, they own the network. They own everything. So they, yeah, they absolutely, uh, they absolutely have the uh, right to remove everything, and it's proper because the things, everything that's on there represents them. So any everything, mm -hmm. anybody that they host, it's them giving um, hearty approval of that person. It's like saying this, this is a good person to have on this network. And so if mm. they then deem that you are not good to have on the network, then it makes every sense. It makes absolute sense for them to remove you from that network. The thing is what's interesting about Daystar, as mentioned, even in the same uh, post over here is that these folks are 
they have their own problems, right? They have their own issues. Um, you know, it says founded and run. This is from Protestia. Shout out to Protestia. Mm-hmm. Founded and run by Marcus Lamb, a wolf who repeatedly taught that God would heal the sickness and diseases of anyone who gave to his network. <laughs> Daystar Network holds the dubious distinction of being the second most evil and wicked TV station that the devil has ever concocted after the <laughs> TVN which currently holds the top spot. You know how Protestia get down. They don't, oh, yeah. they no, don't mince I, I words. Know. It's a uh, very sharp, serrated <laughs> edge yeah. For, oh, yeah, you know. for these kind of things. Um, so mm. uh, bring it back over here. Uh, for decades, Daystar has platformed the who's who of prosperity, heretics, and false teachers, including mm. Joyce Meyer, Sid Roth, Joel Osteen, Joseph Prince, Jentison Franklin, T.D. Jakes, Andrew Womack, Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, Jim Baker, and Paula White. These men and women have been molesting the scriptures for years, abusing it so they might in turn spiritually abuse and molest victims of their prosperity scams and heretical doctrine. They're not committed to the truth of God's word, but rather Mm -hmm. the bottom line on their bank statement. And Morris is simply too bad for business. Mm. Wow. Wow. That's that's a really (laughs) scathing uh, article right there. Very scathing article. But yeah, I mean, that is... That's Daystar, um, you know, in a nutshell, uh, as uh, described from uh, Protestia. Protestia. <laughs> yeah. Protestia, yep, yep. So, yeah, it's because these people, they export their false teaching worldwide, okay? They export their teachings worldwide. So, yes, you might take down uh, Morris because of this situation, but, you know, you still have all these other false teachers on that program. <laughs> so we just did it. We just shut down this <laughs> Thank you.